Inventor. General. Strategist. Legend. The great Prime Minister of Shu Han. The Three Kingdoms genius, Zhuge Liang. Courtesy name Kong Ming. He is regarded as the most accomplished strategist of his era and is often compared to the great Sun Tzu. Despite living in seclusion as a hermit farmer, he quickly garnered a reputation for being an intelligent and talented man. He earned the nickname Wo Long, meaning sleeping or crouching dragon. After joining Shu Han founder Liu Bei, Kong Ming transformed the state of Shu into a regional power introducing agricultural and industrial policies. Liu Bei valued his advisor so much that he said, Now that I have Kong Ming, I am like a fish that has found water. Kong Ming rose through the military ranks to finally the Imperial Chancellor of Shu Han. But this documentary will not focus on the polymath's military career, nor his strategies or inventions. I have already made many videos on those subjects. Here, I will focus on the legendary and magical depictions of Zhuge Liang, as he is portrayed in the historical novel Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and how this relates to Taoist magic. In the age-old stories, Kong Ming is almost always depicted wearing Taoist robes and carrying with him a famous object that has become synonymous with the Crouching Dragon, the iconic Feather Fan. As a Taoist ceremonial magician, I have taken it upon myself to uncover and unravel the occult meanings of this sacred magical artifact. I have been a practitioner of the arcane arts for 13 years and I have communed with the divine spirit of the great prime minister for just as long. I consider myself a spiritual student of Kong Ming and the information that I'll be presenting here today has come from years of invocations and evocations, trial and error, experimentation with ritual magic. And now, I am prepared to share these teachings with the world. I will explain and demonstrate why I believe this is the most powerful object in magic. Welcome to my life's work. Let us decipher the magical secrets of Zhuge Liang's Feather Fan. <laughs> The origins of the fan are revealed in the name. This fan is known as a Kong Ming fan, of course made famous by the legendary strategist himself. Zhuge Liang was one of China's most powerful men during the end of the Han Dynasty. The great prime minister carried it with him on all of his military expeditions, using it to direct his army on the battlefield. It is said that he would intently gaze into the fan going into a deep state of trance. Some books said he looked at it as if he was examining an intricate design on its surface. The legend goes that one day, one of his young attendants secretly looked at the fan, probably whilst Kong Ming was sleeping. This attendant wanted to know the mysteries that it concealed. He took a good look and he couldn't see anything but an arrangement of feathers. When Kong Ming looked, he could see the universe. He could see infinite possibility, boundless potential, and abounding inspiration. The fan lit a fire in the already vivid imagination of Kong Ming. There was something about it that he could see and no one else could. I see it too, maybe not to the same extent that he did, but I see and feel beyond the obvious. When I look into my fan, 
I feel as though I am viewing reality from an exterior perspective. I feel detached from time and solidity, and I feel as though my body has no beginning or end. I become cosmic and ethereal to the point where I lose track of time itself. I often gaze into the fan thinking it's only been about 30 seconds to find out it's been 30 minutes. The way I would describe it, there's a sensation of disconnecting from the concept of schedule, of order, of constraint. My mind ceases to exist as a mind and it fuses with what the Taoists call the Wu Ji, the primordial universe. When I enter that trance, I realize that infinity is heaven and the human experience is so far away, it feels like a lofty dream. There's a sense of Zen that overcomes me. It is similar to remote viewing, only it's remote feeling, but it's feeling without the body and it's perceiving those feelings without the mind. Sometimes I see myself and my own life unfolding like a movie. I see people of my past and personal events that have happened to me. I can interact with them and I can even change them, but these changes never carry over to this world. I see dead loved ones or are they really dead or just dead as we know it. I come back with so many questions. I asked Kong Ming in a trance. What is this state of being? He responded cryptically, just before death, just before life. What I took from that, it's existence without existing, before creation and destruction. It's the supreme infinite crossroads of the cosmos. It goes beyond duality. It's deeper than light and darkness. The last time it happened to me, I heard these words, I, I become, become memory. memory. It's odd, but it makes sense to me because this place has a memory-like quality to it. Some people are going to be turned off when I say this. I feel like I'm talking to God, talking to the divine, and it's answering me back. I believe the fan behaves like a key or a kind of universal remote, which unlocks space anomalies. I believe it knows how to speak the language of the soul. Not by using words, but by using sensations of the spirit. I believe this is the purest kind of communication. Did Kong Ming see something like this as well? I don't know for sure, I'm not saying he did, but I certainly have. The Book of Yu Lin says that Kong Ming used the fan to signal his troops during a battle with Sima Yi on the banks of the Wei River near Chang'an. The fan was likely used to command his vast army, using it as a signal to tell ambush parties to attack, to start fire attacks, to retreat or advance. The association between Kong Ming and the Feather Fan is known worldwide. The fan has become a symbol of wisdom, genius, intellect, strategy and foresight. Kong Ming wasn't the only person in China to carry a fan. One of the eight immortals, Zhongli Chuan, carries a large fan which summons up the dead and transforms stones into gold. White fans are typically used for Taoist necromancy. What is the distinction between a Kong Ming fan and a regular feather fan? There is a certain criteria that needs to be met. Using mine as a perfect example here, a Kong Ming fan will usually be of five different colors and tones. Gray, black, white, brown, or a combination of those shades. A Kong Ming fan will always have a Bogwa centerpiece containing some variation of the eight triagrams. Usually the pre-heaven Bogwa arrangement is present, not the King Wen post-heaven. The broken lines represent Yin and the unbroken are Yang. 
The earlier Bogwa, sometimes referred to as the primordial Bogwa, is an arrangement of opposites with supreme Yang at the top and supreme Yin at the bottom. The father above, the mother below. Heaven above, earth below. Solar energy, lunar energy. Fire Qi and water Qi. This arrangement shows us that the opposing forces of yin and yang are present in the creation of all things, and it also focuses on the principles of darkness and light. One gives weight to the other. Each power, whether it be yin or yang, is mutually dependent on another. They balance each other out. This Bogwa shows the polar nature of the universe and how the two powers cannot be fully separated. Everything sits within perfect order. Having the pre-heaven arrangement on a fan makes it more divine. Therefore, it offers more protection for the bearer. The creator of this arrangement is thought to be Fu Shi, who is credited for teaching people how to fish, cook, and introducing the concept of marriage. In the center of the Bogwa is the Taiji symbol, representing the supreme ultimate, more famously known as the Yin and Yang. Yang is active, Yin is passive. Yang is creative, Yin is receptive. Yong is the sun's rays shining down, and yin is mist and clouds. Having this great symbol in the center of a fan allows the bearer to harness the powers of nature for his or her own bidding. Just like anything else, a Kongming fan will have yin and yang properties. The outer side of the fan is the yang side, whilst the inner side is yin. The yang side always faces outward, never inward. This is not because it may harm the bearer, but it may harm the fan's delicate inner yin side, which is never exposed outward, for it exposes what is known as the fan's po organ. This feather on the yin side is the beating heart of the fan. It represents a vital organ of which qi is flowing through. Contained within lies the Fan Shen. Over time, your own Qi merges with the Fan's Qi, which further empowers you and empowers the Fan. After a period of several years, you both mutually depend on each other. Much like Yin and Yang, one gives power to the other, so both benefit from this partnership. This heart must never receive direct strikes of noxious Qi for it will weaken the entire fan. Get ready to hear something you have never heard before. A Kongming fan is not a ritual tool. It is not an object, not even a holy object. It is considered to be a living, breathing being, just as alive as a person. I call it the magician's companion. The outer organ here represents what the Taoists call the Han soul, which is the ethereal soul, and this inner organ is the Po corporeal soul. The Po also houses the Fan's animal soul, which comes from the original bird. This is why it is very important that you know what kind of bird was involved in the creation process. These exposed stalks on the bottom of the fan are known as the fan's blood vessels. Qi constantly moves through these stalks where it may exit at the top or at the bottom of the handle. If Qi exits at the top, this is known as Yin Qi. This energy can be used to attack someone on a psychic level. If the Qi exits at the bottom of the handle, it is Yang. This qi will travel into the body of the bearer, into his or her own hand, and it will nourish their organs. Do you see the two fork design at the top? These two prongs represent what is known as the two choices. When faced with a difficult situation, we always have at least two options. We can keep a cool head, try to keep calm and collected, 
or we can be aggressive and assertive. The fork design is a reminder that the bearer always has a choice, yes or no, action or non-action, Wu Wei. The mythical story of how Zhuge Liang acquired his famous feather fan is an inspiring one. There are several variations of this legend. The legend goes that when Kong Ming was young, he was intelligent but mute. When he was nine years old, he was still unable to speak. One day he met an old white-haired Taoist master who cured him of this condition. The old master saw greatness in the young Kong Ming and he became the Taoist's apprentice, learning astronomy, geography, the philosophy of yin and yang, the eight triagrams and the art of war. Kong Ming was a naturally gifted student. He had a photographic memory and was adored by his master. When Kong Ming turned 17, his whole life was about to change. One day, as he was walking by an abandoned nunnery, a strong wind began to blow and heavy rain started to fall. Kong Ming took shelter from the elements within the nunnery and waited out the storm. Whilst he was there taking shelter, a young woman aged 16 approached Kong Ming and invited him for tea at her house. She told him that both of her parents had died and she lived a lonely life at the old nunnery. Her appearance was striking. According to the legend, she was said to have looked like a fairy. 17-year-old Kong Ming could not help but fall under her spell. After the storm had passed, Kong Ming got up to leave when the young woman told him, please come back and take a tea break with me. On his way back home, Kong Ming thought it was very strange and wondered why he had never noticed anyone living in the nunnery before. Indeed, he knew something was off but he went back to the woman to chat and play chess. His master noted that Kong Ming began to neglect his studies. He became distracted and forgetful. His focus and attention was now elsewhere. The Taoist master pointed towards a tree which was entwined by vines and asked his student, do you know why that tree is on the verge of dying and unable to grow well? It is being strangled by the vines, Zhuge Liang replied. Kong Ming's infatuation with this mysterious woman was destroying his ability to study. The master said, yes, for the tree growing on a mountain, where it is full of stones and there is little soil, it is indeed hard. But if it pushes its roots downward, it can grow its branches upward, becoming bigger and stronger. However, when the tree is strangled by the vines, it cannot grow up any longer. That's when we say, trees fear being entangled by soft vines. Zhuge Liang asked his master if he knew what was happening. The master replied, He who lives near the water knows the disposition of fish, and he who lives near the hill knows the sounds of birds. Watching you closely, and observing your actions, how could I not know your mind? The master began to explain the truth behind the mysterious woman. That young woman you adore is not a human being. Originally, she was a crane in the heavenly palace, but she stole the heavenly queen mother's peach and ate it. She was expelled to earth as a punishment, and she transformed herself into a beautiful woman but she carries with her an ignorant, lazy and lustful nature. You just pay attention to her beautiful face, but you don't know she's nothing but a fowl. If you keep being so muddle-headed, you will be nothing in your life. Someday, if you don't listen to her, she will punish you. Kong Ming, filled with anxiety, asked his master what he should do. The Taoist told him, the crane often flies up to the Milky Way at midnight for bathing in its true form. During this time, go into her room and burn her clothes. Those clothes are what she stole from the heavenly palace. 
If the clothes are incinerated, the crane won't be able to transform into a human being again. The master proceeded to hand Kong Ming a dragon-headed cane and said, When the crane sees the nunnery on fire, it will definitely fly back from the Milky Way immediately. When she sees you burning her clothes, she definitely won't let you go. If that crane tries to hurt you, you can hit it with this cane. You must remember this. Kong Ming obeyed the master's instructions. He quietly lit the clothes on fire, and just as the Taoist predicted, the crane flew back to earth. She saw Kong Ming burning the clothes and attempted to attack him by pecking out his eyes. Kong Ming struck the bird with the cane, knocking it to the ground. He quickly grabbed its tail, but the crane managed to fly away, leaving a handful of feathers in Kong Ming's hand. In order to remember the whole situation, he decided to create a fan which he would carry for the rest of his life. Every time he looked at the fan, he would be reminded to never succumb to earthly desires. He had learnt his lesson. When pointed towards the sky, the two prongs will draw chi from the environment that you are in. Acting like a magnet, the chi will enter via the prongs and travel through the blood vessels of the fan until the energy reaches the bogwa. Now remember what I said, you don't want to absorb chi from a dead environment. I've talked about this many times on this channel before because you don't want stagnant chi inside of you. Well, the early heaven bogwa sequence acts as a filter. It purifies and converts yin energy into yang, so then it is safe to absorb it through your hands and into your body. This is not a psychological process. You really can feel the chi traveling into your hand. Feels like electricity, tingling, and almost like an expanding sensation throughout the body. It's not unpleasant, but you can certainly feel it. When I first mentioned that a Kongming fan is a living being, like all living beings, it can die. It isn't immortal. So if anything ever happened to the heart, one way that you would know your fan is dying is if the qi is no longer converting from yin to yang. And the only way you'll know that is by getting sick, because you'll be absorbing unfiltered energy. You do not want non-purified yin chi in your blood. The fan should not die before you do. If it does die, its corporeal po soul may remain with it, whilst the ethereal hun soul will wait for you in heaven. The round shape of this circular centerpiece represents heaven, and the round inner circle represents the astral where all ideas, thoughts, imaginary concepts exist before they are brought to material creation. For example, inventions, as Kong Ming was a great inventor. The Yong-facing Bogwa represents the conscious mind, and the Yin-facing Bogwa is the subconscious mind. Both sides can be used individually or collectively for spells. So let's say you wanted to practice a working where you go deep into your dark desires and repressed memories, this Yin Bogwa is perfect for that purpose. Each individual triagram can be used to invoke a certain emotion or feeling within the bearer. So by simply placing your index finger on the triagram of your choice, Magical properties that are unique to that triagram will start flowing into your hands, which will change the way you perceive the world. The wonderful thing about these triagrams, they are raised, so even blind people would be able to feel them. One should close their eyes and see without seeing. Feel the broken and unbroken lines. A true fan master will know each and every triagram, not by sight, but by sensation. One of the most important aspects of the Kongming fan is the way it is held. You hold it in your dominant hand. Simply wave it back and forth using your wrist like so. Do not grip the fan tightly. 
Hold it gently with a loose and relaxed grip, like you are holding a delicate flower. Keep the waves gentle and controlled. No jerky or sudden movements. You should be able to wave the fan like clockwork with grace, poise, and elegance. The waving has to be in rhythm, steady and calm, like a placid river. The stream moves forward, but it does not move quickly. Nature does not rush, and yet everything is accomplished. I can always tell if someone is a novice when it comes to fans. They tend to wave it back and forth like a flag, gripping onto it as if it's about to fly away. Take a breath. I've created a very simple meditation called the Feather Breath Exercise. With your index finger on the trigram of your choice, match your breathing with the waves of the fan. As you inhale, wave inward, and as you exhale, wave outward. Do this at a controlled pace for five minutes every day. Eventually, you will do this automatically. The union of mind, body, spirit, and fan, moving and breathing as one. There is also a special way of putting down the fan when it's not in use. So when you go to place the fan down, always place it on the yin side with the yang side facing upwards. That way, the organ, the heart, is not exposed to any chi. Make sure the handle is facing you. Do not place the fan like this, with the feathers facing you, because the chi from the feathers will overwhelm your body. And it could cause illness. Also, be considerate of mirrors within the room as well. Even if you place the handle towards you, but there's a mirror directly in front of the two prongs, this will create the effect of energy bouncing back. And again, it could make you ill. Too much chi, too little chi. It's all about finding that sweet spot. There are many unusual ways that you can use a Kongming fan. One such magical example would be known as a Kongming fan consecration. It involves putting certain objects on the fan in order to charge them or bless them. I'll give you an example. Let's say you want to write a letter to a friend. You want this friend to read it, take it seriously, and write back to you. After you are done writing the letter, place the paper on the end of the Kongming fan's yin side. For around 30 to 60 seconds, and the fan will magically charge all of the written words. So when the person reads it, whatever point you are trying to make or whatever outcome you want, the chances are it will happen. If you want that job promotion or you want to manifest an opportunity, use the Kongming fan consecration method. You can also write using the handle of the fan as well. Attach some ink to the end and hold the handle like so. You can then individually empower your words by pressing your thumb onto various trigrams to charge those words with the relevant power. So, if you wanted to charge some words with Yin Chi, hold down the Earth trigram like so, and the corresponding energies will affect the words, which in turn will affect the reader and change that person's perception. There's really no limits to what you can do with this technique. I suppose it does raise the moral argument: Is this black magic? Is it wrong to use the fan to influence others? Well, I think there's a difference between persuading someone and harming someone. We always try to influence others, regardless of our words, our actions, our demeanor. People are always trying to get what they want. So why not actually make sure you get it in a safe way? It's not like you're controlling the person or hurting them. The Kongming fan is both a shield and a sword, a way to attack and defend if the situation calls for it. Sugar Leong's fan has become a part of pop culture. Within the popular video game series Dynasty Warriors, Sugar Leong is a very prominent character. Just like his depictions in the historical novel, he is an exceptional genius who serves Liu Bei with unwavering loyalty. His tactics and plans help establish the Kingdom of Shu. Sugar Leong, known as the Sleeping Dragon, he was one of the most brilliant strategists of his time. 
He studied military tactics along with Xu Xu and others as disciples of the famed strategist Simo Hui of Jing province. Afterwards, he retreated to a life of solitude along with his wife, Yue Ying. However, he was later paid three visits by Liu Bei and agreed to serve as a strategist. The time had come for him to wield his vast intellect in order to help create a land of virtue. Within the game's over-the-top world, his magical persona is highlighted quite a bit. He is able to shoot lasers, create lightning storms, and of course he does all of this with his fan. Kong Ming fights on the battlefield, not with a sword or a spear, but with a spiritual weapon. Whilst this is obviously a cool fantasy for a game, the core concept of using a fan to attack is not make-believe. For centuries, these fans have been used for defense magic. If someone is trying to physically destroy you via a curse or a hex, you can use the fan to send it straight back to them. To do this, place a picture of the person who is attacking you onto the two prongs of the fan. Place your index finger and your middle finger onto the Taiji symbol in a sword hand seal like this and say your commands out loud, what you want to happen. I don't advocate baneful spells at all, as I'm sure all of you know, I've been very clear with that in the past, but still, the fan is a spiritual weapon, so people need to know how to use it when the time comes for self-defense. I want you to take a look at the Bogwa here. Notice how some of the triagrams appear to be fading, like the gold paint is fading away. This is actually a sign of the Fan Master's experience level. The more fading that is present, the more the fan has been used. The more it is used, the stronger the relationship it will build with its bearer. The goal of any Taoist Fan Master is to carry his or her Kongming fan long after all of the triagrams have faded. This shows unwavering dedication to the way, loyalty to magic, and plenty of years worth of experience. A wise Taoist would look at my fan and see the story of my life up until this point. He or she would know all of my victories and all of my failures. I would also be able to tell the same about his or her fan. What triagrams have been used reveal the person's struggles, emotional states, shortcomings and talents. Has the Taoist mostly taken a yin approach or has he or she taken a yang approach? Something so small can reveal so much to experienced eyes. This law is always true. The more fading on the fan's triagrams, the more experienced the person is who is uh, carrying it. Within 10 to 15 years, half of the Bogwa on my fan would have long faded. To see an old Taoist master with an entirely faded, blacked out Bogwa, he or she is truly one with the Tao. One thing you should never do with a Kongming fan is feel burdened to carry it. It is not an item. You do not carry it when it is convenient for you. Wherever you go, the fan goes with you. That is the oath that you make at the beginning of your magical life. You swear an oath of brotherhood with your fan, to share hardship and joy with it, to carry it through thick and thin. You know that old saying, death do us part. Even death cannot part the Taoist from his or her fan. In the afterlife, the Taoist is able to carry it in heaven just as he did on earth, but for all of eternity. The oath is forever, and when you swear it, you have to keep it. When people summon Zhuge Liang to visible appearance in ritual, he always manifests in his Taoist robes and holding his feather fan. Kong Ming has been physically deceased for almost 2000 years, he still has his fan. That oath is eternal. It makes me laugh when I see occult YouTubers showing off their talismans and they tell bullshit stories of how long they've been using this dagger or that staff. 
Take a look at most of their talismans. They look brand new, fresh from Amazon. My fan has scratches, scuffs, the paint on the handle is peeling, the handle itself is loose, the feathers are ruffled. It looks suitably used, because I've used it endlessly. You can tell a lot from a magician's signature talisman. Don't throw something away because it shows its story. All these little so-called imperfections only add layers of power to the fan. I will address a big misconception that's going around right now, quite a dangerous one actually. When you look online for Kongming fans, you will find some very expensive antiques. Chinese feather fans that are hundreds of years old and they sell for big money, especially when the auction site claims that the fan was used by a sorcerer at one point in time. People automatically think, here's a fan that once belonged to a powerful Dao Shi, I bet that's awesome, I'm going to buy it. My advice, do not buy a used fan. Because these fans work by absorbing their owner's chi, once the owner dies, the fan also dies because the two souls are entwined and the fan's Hun soul goes to heaven with its owner. So what you are spending thousands of pounds or dollars on is a shell. It no longer has any beneficial magical ability. Plus, it's morally wrong. A fan and its original bearer should not be separated after the oath is made. If you steal another Taoist fan, it will reject you and it can bring misfortune to your life. You hear about wealthy collectors buying talismans from tombs of warlords and emperors. These collectors fall victim to curses and disasters. This is usually because the magician himself programs the fan to bring bad luck to anyone who dares steal it. So then plenty of fools end up, no exaggeration, dead. So always buy new. That way, you can keep the costs down and you can begin your own magical journey with something that is destined for you. Within the context of Taoist ritual magic, the fan can be used as a stand-in for the magician. So if for some reason you need to quickly leave the altar or temple, but you're in the middle of a spell, you can leave the fan on the altar table and it will take the place of the practitioner and it will continue to work the magic on your behalf. There's been several incidents in my life where I've had to suddenly depart mid-ritual. I've left the fan behind and the spirits haven't even recognized or noticed that I ever left. The fan can also substitute a second practitioner. So if a working requires two magicians, but you don't know anyone willing or able to assist you, you can use the fan as a magical partner. The magician may choose to astral project, enter a trance and leave the fan to mine the altar or he or she may choose to send the fan into the astral realms to bring back information on their behalf. Kongming fans are also known for their protective powers. If the working requires the magician to create a chamber of chi, in other words an energetic force field, the fan is able to project this force field around the sorcerer's body effectively placing the person in a secure bubble which no demon or immortal can enter. Whenever I work with a new entity or spirit that I don't fully trust, I always start off by drawing a circle with my fan to create and seal my chamber of chi. The fan naturally increases a person's aura over time. As the aura expands over the years, the individual psychic abilities become more developed, resulting in greater intuition, better management of mood and emotional control. For those looking to activate their yin and yang eyes so they can see ghosts, fan magic is highly recommended, especially white fans as they attract the attention of entities. The three layers of feathers on this white fan represents the Tao Trinity. 
man, earth and heaven, but also the physical realm, the energetic realm and the spiritual realm, as well as the three pure ones and the three dantians. Carrying a feather fan is thought to increase the intelligence level of the bearer, making the person more perceptive and open to learning. Keep this in mind if you are studying for a test. All Kongming fans, regardless of colour and design, correspond to the same divine group of stars, the Northern Dipper, aka the Seven Stars. White fans prefer to bathe in moonlight, whilst darker fans prefer starlight. When the light hits the feathers, it is absorbed. In the same way as the human body absorbing vitamin D from the sun, fans absorb nocturnal energies from the night sky as a way of recharging. Every time this happens, celestial energy is stored in the Bogwa. Life essence from the Northern Dipper enters into our hands. The macrocosm and the microcosm fuse as one. Having star energy coursing through your veins is one of the many techniques for acquiring immortality. In ancient China, there were many customs and traditions centered around feather fans. When magicians were performing rituals in public, they would often cover their mouths with a fan so the incantations and words of power could not be lip-read by the masses. During funerals, Chinese women would carry fans to shield themselves from the overabundance of yin qi, and within certain groups of form school feng shui, fans were used to energetically sense the natural environment. That's what I do. They worked like antennas, directly picking up spiritual signals, relaying geographical information back to the practitioner to find out if the land was healthy or toxic. Most fans were typically made of crane, goose, swan, kingfisher, peacock, and pheasant feathers, with prices varying greatly, especially fans with handles made from horn. Fans with horn handles are very expensive, but very exquisite. Finding a quality fan online is extremely difficult. Many cheap imitations exist, but there are still some treasures out there if you know where to look. Any fan made in the Gaochun district in Nanjing, China is regarded as the finest in the country. Gaochung artists and craftsmen are second to none. The fans here date back 600 years and each one is a total work of art made to the highest standard. One final question remains. What place do these fans have in the modern world, in the 21st century? Their greatness is now in the hands of a new generation, and it's up to us to educate the world about their brilliance. They are just as powerful as they were almost 2000 years ago, and each and every fan offers something priceless. With the guidance of Zhuge Liang, your perfect fan is out there, waiting for you, to swear that oath. Don't forget to join my Taoist Magic Facebook group. I'm Lord Josh Allen. Thank you for watching.